what is a joint? It's just a connection between two bones. Mm -hmm. And in Latin, we call that articulation. Just like when you articulate, you're talking. I am articulate, I'm moving my tongue. It's the same thing, articulation, joint. Now, how do we classify joints? We have different ways to classify things in life. But for joint, if th two things come together, one way to classify them is what is between them. That's one way. The second one could be, how do they move? Do they not move at all? Do they move a little tiny bit? Or they move a lot? So those are the two ways we classify joints. Now, based on what is between them, we got four types. The first type is, let's say you have two bones that are joined together and there's nothing between them but bone. Example, your frontal bone. It used to be two bones before. But we grew and it got ossified. What it means? It became bony. So if it became bony, it means that just nothing between them. We call that bony joint. But in Latin, it's called synostosis. Remember the, os, the word os, yeah. just a moment, synostosis. It's going to be bony. Then we have a second joint where we have like fiber between them. Right? What mm -hmm. type of fiber? Collagen fiber. It's not like collagen sewing bones together. Mm -hmm. We call that one fibrous joint. Because there's what? Fibrous connective tissue between them, collagen fiber between them. Gotcha. Then the third one, we have cartilage between them. It's not bone, it's not fiber, cartilage. We call that cartilaginous joint. And then the fourth one, which is the more one we think as, as joint, like the one we move, synovial. Why? Because there's a synovial fluid between the two bones. So we got four. One bony, one between them, cartilaginous, cartilage, fibers, fiber, and what else? Synovial, synovial fluid. That's between them. Mm -hmm. Then, based on whether they move or not, we have the bone, the joints that do not move at all. We call them sin arthrosis. So sin arthrosis. The ones that move a little tiny bit, amphiarthrosis. And the ones that move freely, diarthrosis. Right? I call it a side story, basically. Right? So sad. You can't move at all. You move a little bit. You completely move. S-A-D, sad. Gotcha. Sin arthrosis, amphiarthrosis, diarthrosis. Right mm -hmm. now, if you look at this classification, you can plug in the classification based on what's between them, of course. If you take, for example, bony joint, see osteosis, do they move? Do the bone? No, they don't, no, move. They don't move. So, what would they be here? Osteosis, exactly. Now, if you take your teeth, that's kind of a relative thing, but we believe teeth do not move, you cannot move your teeth back and forth. So, that's going to be gum forces, mm -hmm. right? Because there is fiber between them. There's a fiber, collagen fiber, holding your teeth to your bone, basically. Mm -hmm. Tie them. I'll show you the picture, right? So if they don't move, what type are they going to be here? Uh, no, bone. no, they don't move. Oh, they don't move yeah, we pretend they don't move. Okay. I mean, you know, just, when you have braces, they kind of move a yeah. little bit. But like we, when you're like a baby, like they move, like when they come out. Like, exactly. But think about it. If you think about it, we'd be like, ah, they don't move. So we got to okay. take them out. Arthrosis. Okay. What about sutures? Remember, we have four types of suture on our skull. We got more than that. We just talked about four, right? Mm -hmm. We got a coronal suture, sagittal suture, lambdoid suture, and squamous sutures. Do they move? They better not. I mean, your head doesn't move. Mm -hmm. Everything is there. So that's only what's up here. Synarthrosis, you can see. Based on what's between them, you can pretend, you can think about, hey, what class, what, where do I classify that? Then... Just based off how much it moves. Exactly. Gotcha. So when we think about the next one, for example, the pubic symphysis. I told you during childbirth, it opens a little bit, right? Yeah. So what that going to be here? And fear throat, because it moves a little bit. Then, if you take your radius and ulna, if I'm moving my hand this way or that way, it is because my radius is moving against my own, between them. So inside of me, like here, if I could put my finger between, I will have a joint. Something connecting my radius and ulna. That's going to be syndesmosis. Okay. So does it move? Yeah. Yeah, of course it moves a little bit. So we got to have some of that. 
enthiorthrosis. Then, when you take synchondrosis, when there's chondral between them, that can move a little bit. That's going to be enthiorthrosis. Now, the only thing we have left is synovial joint. Does it move? Yeah. A little bit or a lot? A lot. So that's going to be what? Diarthrosis. That's what we talk about synovial joint and lot. So if you think about it, the pivot synthesis, like the synthesis, for example, is the amphiothrosis because it moves a little bit. What is it between them? Fibrocartilage. We saw it. Between the body of the vertebrae, remember that we have the cushioning, thick fibrocartilage there too? That one moves too a little bit. That's why you can go like this because they kind of move a little tiny. You know, you can do all that, right? And then, synchondrosis, chondral stuff, yeah. it's going to be cartilage. Now, synesmosis, it's going to be desmosis here. And synostosis, and then suture, and then gum forces, right? Gum forces. Mm -hmm. So, these are just connective tissues. So, we have fibers, there's fiber between them. Bony, there's bone between them, right? So, cartilage, there's cartilage between them. Mm -hmm. Now, the first rib is a cartilage in its joint, is a cartilage. But the rest of the ribs are all synovial joint. There's a little liquid between them. Little synovial, so it's a lot, a lot. Okay. Right. Now, when we come to the synovial joint, we talk about every joint that moves is called synovial, right? Mm -hmm. Kind of. So, we said, based on the movement, how many different ways can you move your body? It depends on the part of your body. Mm -hmm. Your elbow, you can go like this, mm -hmm. but you can't go like that. Your knee, you can go like this, but you can't go like this. But if you touch your shoulder, you can go like this, you can go like that, mm -hmm. you can go like this, you can even go like that. Mm -hmm. That's gonna be different axis. Then you go, remember X axis, yeah. Y axis, and then Z axis, and then you kind of turn around circle. Those are gonna be multi-axial joint. It means you can go in different axis. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you have joints that only move two different ways. For example, if I take my finger, I can go like this, all like that. Only two ways. I cannot twist, twist my finger here. I cannot. But if you take, for example, my shoulder, I can not only go like that. I can go like this. I can go like this. And I even can go like that. That multi action. But if I take my elbow, what can I do? Besides this one, what else can I do? That's Nothing. All. That's all. Okay. It's going to be mano axial. Mano means what? What? I only go one way. Here I can go this way. I can go this way, but here I can go this way. Oh, I can go this way. I can go that way. Gotcha. So all that is only different axes of movement. Okay. Now, based on that, what is flexion extension? Flexion just means you're reducing the angle of the joint. What is the angle here? 180 degree. If I come here, it become 90. If it goes from 180 to 90, it's called flexion. Gotcha. Right? Mm -hmm. If I go here, that's the degree here. If I go like this, I came from 80, 180 degree to 90 degree. That's not the flexion. So if I'm, re, if I'm increasing the degree, so from 90 to 180, it's called extension. Then if I can pass that, it's called hyperextension. So here I'm going to be extension, flexion, extension, hyperextension. The same thing with my leg. I can go flexion, extension, hyperextension, right? And then I can go... Extension, I can go flexion, extension, hyperextension. Because the angle is what I'm looking at here. If I'm flexing them, I'm reducing the angle. If I'm extending, I'm increasing. If I can go over. But if you take your elbow, for example, I cannot hyperextend my uh, elbow. I can go flexion, extension, but hyper, I can't. got to break my arm together. The same thing with my knee. But my shoulder and my hip, I can do that. I can so do those that. are injuries. Mm -hmm. Like when someone says, like, they hyperextended something. Exactly, they hyperextended. That's kind of an injury. If it's not uh, clinical. That means if, then, uh, anatomically, you can't do it. So if you do extra, then it's going to hurt you. Okay. But if I hyperextend my shoulder, it doesn't do anything. Because it, no, I can actually hyperextend it. Mm -hmm. So the flexion, extension, flexion, extension, flexion, extension, flexion, extension, hyperextension. Flexion, extension, hyperextension. You see? Extension. So all that. Then if I take abduction and adduction, add, I'm adding to myself, A, B, I'm going away, like A and B. Mm -hmm. So it, well, that's going to be lateral medial. But that means I'm going this way. Everything okay. going that way and coming. It doesn't go front and back. Mm -hmm. So if I go abduction, A, B, adduction, abduction. The same thing with my finger. I could go 
abduction, adduction, right? I can do that. Then, that's going to be flexion, extension, abduction, adduction. And then rotation, I'm rotating against myself, around myself, like I'm rotating. My hip rotation. Or I can even rotate my neck. I can flex, I can rotate. Right. But I can flex laterally immediately too. I can go lateral rotation, flexion. But if it's a rotation, I'll look right, left and right. Right? And then my trunk, I'll go like rotation. Even my sh shoulder, I can go rotation. I can go like this. See? I'm going in and out. And the rotation, I can go like this with my leg also. Rotation. Then, elevation and depression. I can elevate my shoulder or I can depress my shoulder. Elevation, depression. Right? And then, dorsiflexion and plantar flexion. So plantar flexion will be me walking on my tippy toe. So I'm going higher, tippy toe. Mm -hmm. But dorsiflexion, I'm going to be walking on my calcaneal, on the back of yeah. my sole, right? Going down. Now, inversion and eversion. Inversion will be me opening to see inside of my leg from the middle. So eversion will be inversion here, right? In. Mm -hmm. But eversion, which is the E one here, I will see here. So I'm going to go walking on, on the... Um, the middle part of my, my soul, the sole of my feet, right? Then, supination and pronation. If I'm supinating, I'm opening my hand to hold what? Ball of soup in my hand, right? Yeah. I'm supinating and I'm pronating. Yeah. Supination, pronation. So, A, B, duction, abduction, abduction. Flexion, extension, right? Flexion, extension, hyperextension. Flexion, extension, hyperextension. Can you do uh, your, an eversion again? Eversion. Inversion will be me going this way. Okay. Inversion. And eversion will be me going this way. Gotcha. Like this. Eversion. Okay. Okay? So then we talk about the ligament and meniscus. We say meniscus is a fibrous pad in the knee between the femur and the tibia, right? Mm -hmm. We talk about the cruciate ligament. We say the knee is a very protective joint. It has to be protected from the front to the back to the side everywhere because it takes a lot of weight. Then we said that crochet is going to be intracapsular ligament. What does that mean? It's inside the capsule, like between inside your knee. You got two of them there. You got ACL, interior crochet ligament, PCL, posterior crochet ligament. Those are going to be inside the knee. Mm -hmm. Then extracapsular uh, ligament or popliteal, it's got the back or the front. The extra capsule will be outside. We can have the lateral collateral ligament. Collateral means to the side. Mm -hmm. And the medial collateral ligament. So you got medial collateral ligament, lateral collateral ligament. Those are going to be ligaments holding your knee again. And then we got patellar ligament, which will be in the front, mm -hmm. in the patellar bone, holding your bone, patellar to the bone. And uh, what's the definition of a joint capsule? The joint capsule is the bag in which you have everything inside okay. with all the synovial fluid and all that. So the joint has a bag that holds it together. So you will not be. Just like when you get injured, they give you an ice bag to hold it around. Uh -huh. yeah. You have it in your body already. Then we talk about bursa. A bursa is a bag, right, of fibrous tissue holding synovial fluid for extra cushioning. In your knee, you have about 14 or 15 type of bursa, front, back, inside, all that to protect your knee. So you won't get hurt. Like when you get on your knee, it's a bit hard if you didn't have bursa or you have, if you got patella to, to kind of uh, make a cushion. And then here we talk about the hip. We say the pelvic outlet is the, is the outlet. It's like coming out of the pelvic area when the baby comes out. And then we say the pubic symphysis opens up a little bit during childbirth. Of course it hurts, right? We talk about that. So we say there's a fiber connective tissue, you know, uh, fiber cartilage inside the pubic symphysis. And that moves a little bit, so it has to be amphi arthrosis. Make sense? Yeah. All right, thank you.